Hello and welcome back to our decomp tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about in-game trades. So the in-game trades, uh, they work a little bit differently than just your standard give bond. They're a little bit more complicated. Um, so I wrote a basic script that is going to handle the in-game trade. I will put this in the description so that you can copy this and make changes to it um, yourself. But it's pretty similar to the in-game trade scripts that we can check out um, that are already in the game. I've made some small tweaks to make it more readable and to take out some unnecessary um, lines that Game Freak uses every time they do this. I don't know why. Anyway, um, let's jump into it. So to start with, before we actually create our script, we need to go to source data trade.h and we need to add an entry in the struct, or a struct array for the in-game trades. So this is a array of structs that holds all of the data for the Pokemon for our in-game trades. Now to add an, a, to add a new element to this array, we need a define for our array position um, this is just the constant that we're going to use. Um, we'll use it in the script to, you know, say which one that we are, which Pokemon in the in-game trade list that we want to pull out for this particular trade. Um, we just add a, a next one onto the list, one value higher than the last. Um, then we, this is uh, include constants trade.h, and this is source data trade.h, because this is the data file and this holds the constants. And trade.c is the file that they are the header files for. All of the stuff in here is used inside of this. Um, so in trade.h, we go to our s in game trades array, that is the array of our in game trade structs. And we are going to just scroll down to the bottom. You will go put a comma after the last entry and copy and paste the entry. And we're going to make changes to it. You're going to give it the constant that you added, whatever the next constant in that list is. You can give it a name. You can give it a new species. You can give it an IV spread. Um, you can give it an ability. This is the position of the, you can in the Pokemon data when you're defining like a species itself, um, it can obviously choose from multiple abilities and this is where you define this one for this Pokemon since you can have it set from the start. You, know, you give it an ID, this is the ID of the player, I just copied the, this one, but uh, you can change that to whatever you want, it's not that important other than it can affect certain things uh, like the shiny, uh, whether or not a Pokemon is shiny I believe. Um, Conditions, um, this is just uh, conditions and sheen are both uh, contest related, uh, thanks to Citrus Bolt for pointing that out to me. Uh, um, so I don't really know exactly what they do and I don't really care that much, but uh, they have something to do with the contest. The personality value is just the personality of the Pokemon. It also determines things like shiny um, and other things, uh, I believe, like the nature as well. Um, and then it's normally four bytes, but we, uh, the you know, the in-game trades are only given a small number. Um, I probably to save data on the transmission, I don't know. I'm not sure if a full one, a full one should probably work. I don't know why they're specifically given, you know, judging by the actual in-game trade code, it's just a regular, you know, create mon function call, but it's not important. Anyway, we can give it a held item. We can give it mail if we want to. Uh, the first or three of these have mail, but this one doesn't. Um, to not give it mail, you give it the negative one uh, value, not zero. Zero is the zeroth position in this in-game trade mail, uh, you know, array. So that's this value. You don't want to give it the zeroth value. You want to give it negative one, which signifies that it is not holding mail, unless you are holding mail, and then you want to give it zero, one, two, three. Next obvious is just the name of the, um, you know, the character that is giving the Pokemon, the gender of the character that is given the Pokemon. Again, Sheen has to do with the contest. And last is the requested species of the trade. So what you are trading it for. This is where you store that value is inside this struct. So now that we've added all this stuff, we are ready to begin our script. So we are just going to put this one in little root. Uh, I have the map open here. It's just this Archie is given this script right here and that's just this script right here. So every time we click on Archie, the script is gonna run. And we're gonna walk through it really quickly. So to start with, lock, face player, go to if set, flag in game, Archie trade, little root event script trade completed. What does this do? If we have already completed the trade, we run this 
function, this uh, this script that just says thanks for trading with me, and then it closes. Um, that's just so that the trade doesn't keep happening over and over and over again. Simple stuff. Next, we buffer the trade and requested mod names and ask the player if they want to make the trade. So when we are creating a trade script, obviously we want to tell the player what the trade is and what the traded Pokemon is and what the what Pokemon they want you know, to for, for the trade to be completed. So we have to buffer those names into string var1 and string var2. As you can see here, this is the, the text that we're going to call willing to trade. Check out this Kyogre. Oh, I can see that you might want it. I'll tell you what, I might be willing to trade it for a Mudkip. And that's what our trade is, but this is obviously dynamic. This is going to pull out whatever the trade is that we give it here. This is the in-game trade Kyogre. We're saving this into this 808 uh, var. Um, so this is going to, well, what we're doing later, this is actually going to buffer it. So first we, we just set um, the in-game trade into this var. This is just a var that we're going to use later um, to... Uh, it's going to be, we're going to buffer it into this 8004 variable, which is going to be used inside of this create in-game trade Pokemon. The reason why we don't put it into that 8084 variable directly, I mean, we do copy immediately after 8008 into 8004, um, but 8004 gets reused m multiple times. Um, throughout the different functions, they uh, return in the 8004 um, instead of our result for some weird reasons, or they access from 8004. Um, so we just store this in 8008 for now, um, and then put that same value back into 8004. This could be a set var 8004 in-game trade Kyogre. It's the exact same thing. Um, it doesn't really matter. So we're just setting this initial trade into some variables so that we can uh, deal with it from these functions. So the first function is get in-game trade species info. And it's a special var, which means it's returning into this variable, 8009, which we're not going to use down here. And this, if we want to briefly look at it, event script not requested mon, so here we're getting the requested mon is being put into this variable, and then we're checking the requested mon down here, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so if we want to first look at this function, so when we call it, this is taking, um, it is creating a pointer to an in-game trade uh, struct, and it is setting that pointer to a specific, you know, part of our struct, and that part is defined by 8004, a special var 8004. So that's what we're doing here. We're putting uh, in-game trade Kyogre into 808 and putting that into 804. So we are using this in-game trade Kyogre, uh, you know, constant as our index in the S in-game trades struct array, and this S in-game trade struct array, when it is indexed at in-game trade Kyogre, it pulls out this data or a pointer to it. Um, so when we, uh, after we do that, we're saving it in this variable, this pointer variable, and then here we're calling string copy. We're copying this right side into string var1, and we're copying this right side in the string var2. Now what is this doing? It's going into G species name, which is just a big array that holds all of the names of all the species indexed by their species constant, and then we're pulling out the species constants of requested species and species from the in-game trade struct. So in here we have requested species as Mudkip and species as Kyogre. So we are pulling out both of these fields um, inside of this inside, and then we're indexing it by that array. We're indexing G species name. So we're taking species Mudkip and species Kyogre, and we're putting it into G species names, which pulls out the actual name, and then it copies that string into string var1 and string var2. And then finally, we return the requested species, which in this case is species mudkip, we return that into the variable that we're calling from the special var. So we're putting the species into 8009. Like I said down here, we would check later after we you know, in, take input from the player, we check to see if it's that species later. And if not, we're like, no, this is the wrong mod. 
So get in-game trade species info is automatically buffering in the string bar one and string bar two. So we don't have to do that ourselves. Um, so little root town text willing to trade it is this text here that has the string bar two and string bar one already there. It's already, um, you know, we're buffering it using this special. So this is just a yes, no box. So this is, do you want to trade? Yes or no. If you say no, we decline the trade. And this is just, it just has text that says, that's too bad, maybe next time. So uh, if you say no, we decline the trade. Otherwise you keep going on and we go get to handling the selection of the requested mod from the player. Now we use the special choose party mod. This is a very common special. It's used in a lot of places, um, you know, for, the name raider, the um, things like that. I'll use this special to choose a party, or to choose a Pokemon in your party for different reasons. Um, so we just do special choose party mon wait state. This pulls up the party screen. It lets us select a party, uh, like a Pokemon in our party. When we select a Pokemon, it returns the the position in the in our party struct in in our party array. Um, struct array, uh, it returns that position into 804, var 0x8004. So it returns that position that we chose to here. If you back it out, it re returns party nothing chosen is the is the um, the value. So we first go to if equal party nothing chosen, decline trade. Same thing as before. Thanks. We'll maybe, maybe next time. Now, if you did choose a Pokemon, then we're going to first copy 804 into 805, because then we're doing get trade species. Now, get trade species, um, it uses 805 for the index in the G player party. So that's why we had to copy 804 and 805, because Choose party mon returned in 804, but get trade species needs 805 as the variable that holds the data, so we are returning into 805. Also, not to get ahead of ourselves, but create in game trade Pokemon also needs the position in our party our our, our party list um, as in 805. So this is killing two birds with one stone because we need it down here as well, and we're not writing it again in the, you know the time that we you know take to get there. So get trade species. If the Pokemon is an egg, we're going to return species none because we are not you're not allowing eggs to be traded. If uh, you if otherwise we return the species. We get mon data you know indexed from the the player party. Um, taking out the monstruct. It is taking it out at the position 0x8005, and we're taking the species. So that is just going to return the species into var result. Um, so this is getting the actual species number for the position in your party, and then we're checking var result and 809, which is the species that it's supposed to be, like we said before. So the species of that place in your party versus the species it's supposed to be. If it's not equal, then we go to the script. Uh, the script is here, buffer species name, string var 1, 8009. I'm just buffering that again. It might even still be there, but I did it anyway, um, because uh, it's similar to how the... Uh, Game Freak does it normally. Um, so anyway, we're buffering the Pokemon back in. This is the Mudkip. 809 is, is Mudkip in this case, the, the requested species um, still. So we're buffering that in the string bar one, and then we're just saying, I'm sorry, but that is not a Mudkip. I cannot trade with you. And then release end. And that's it. Um, so if it is... If so, if they are equal, this is go to if not equal. If they are equal, then we keep going and we get to the perform the actual trade. So we're running this create in game trade Pokemon um, function, which is uh, which runs this in game trade Pokemon function, um, which you know takes the input from uh, these two variables. But if you see here, this the the one that we're actually calling uses G special var eight oh oh five and G special var eight oh oh four. And what are they supposed to be? So eight oh oh five is supposed to be the player mon 
in the, in the the player the position of the player mon in the player party as you see here because we're calling it from the position again this is get mon data it's not a mon itself uh, we're not getting a mon by species we're actually getting the player's physical pokemon um, and it's only really used to get the level of the traded pokemon in this case um, in, in for this function but Anyway, um, then the second one, 804, is the in-game traded Pokemon. Um, so it's the, the it's the indexed in the in-game trade list. It's not, it's not the species of the in-game traded Pokemon. It's the index in the traded list of the Pokemon. So that is 804. So if we go back here, we already have uh, we already have the index um, of the party of the party in 805. So what we need to do is we need to put the the in-game trade Kyogre into 8004. And uh, we do that just by copying from 8008, which is what we set up here. Now, do we really need to do it that way? No, we could have set var 8004 in-game trade Kyogre and then set var 8004 in-game trade Kyogre again. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, this is just, it's similar to how Game Freak does it, so it's how I decided to do it here. Um, but at the end of the day, you can do a hundred different things in a hundred different ways as long as at the end of the day the position in the party ends up being an 8005 and the uh, the uh, position in the in-game trade struct have or the struct array happens to be in 8004 um, and you don't have to do any of this if you don't want to you can just force a trade uh, using if you just put the two values that I just said in 804 and 8005 and then call these two specials it will start the, the in-game trade. That's all you have to do. Um, just to briefly go over this function, if you are interested at all, uh, before you look at the example in-game, all it's doing is it's taking this, this it's creating a struct uh, pointer for the in-game trade, and then it's taking the data from it, um, like the IVs that you have set, and it's setting it to the the setting the IVs of the trainer of the mon after we create it. So first we create mon using the in-game trade species, the in-game trade personality. We set our personality value to be true all the time. Um, so the forced personality, set personality, whatever, normally the personality is randomly generated, but with this uh, value here, set the true, it forces the use of a set personality which we give here which we defined in our uh, in-game trade array struct array and uh, we also take the ID of the in-game trade um, so we create that Pokemon and then we set it all of its can all of its data with the rest of the stuff from the struct uh, we do the mail stuff hide held item stuff calculate stats uh, and then end this function. And then next is the setup trade, which I'm not really going to get into, but as you can imagine, it handles setting up the graphics for the trade sequence, which is a little bit more complicated uh, and not really that relevant to this conversation, so I'm not going to go over it much, but once you have run create in-game trade Pokemon with the proper data in uh, the two variables, 804 and 805, um, all you need to do is call this special and then wait state, make sure to wait state, um, otherwise you know you'll have some problems you wait until it's done display a final message box saying thanks and then set the flag so that the script doesn't run again release end and that's all um, so we can now take a look at the example that we created um, we are going to run down here here's our cheese just standing here I'm gonna go up to him check out this Kyogre oh I can see you on it I might be willing to trade it for a mudcap no that's too bad, maybe next time. Check out this Kyogre, I can see you want it. I might be willing to trade it for a Mudkip. And I did it again. Yes, but this time we're gonna give it a Swampert. I'm sorry, but that is not a Mudkip. I cannot trade with you. Check out this Kyogre, do you want it? Yes, give it a Mudkip. Oh, what? Why am I so bad? And now it's starting the trade. I'll fast forward through it. Anyway, we got Kia. Now this is real power, this is the trade, uh, the last, uh, 
he's not really thanking you there, but uh, that's the last text that he says uh, when we finish the trade. We can open our party. We can see that we now have a Kyogre. If we look at its summary, um, I mean, we, we can't really tell that much about its stats, or at least I can't because I don't really know too much about how the IVs work. Um, but we can see Archie is the... Um, Archie is the name of the person who owned it, um, and the ability Drizzle, I'm assuming, is the zero one. It's level five because that's the same as our Mudkip, and like I showed in the Create In Game Trade Pokemon, that is what it uses from uh, the traded requested mon. Uh, if we continue clicking on Archie, he just says thanks instead of con you know starting the trade sequence again. I'm going to wrap the video up because that is all that I really have to say on that. Uh, I will make sure to include this code in the video description, so if you want to just copy this, just make sure to change the names of these functions, either these, you know, these scripts, um, and change them here as well. Obviously, you don't just want to change uh, the names without changing, you know, where they're, where they're called from as well. Uh, um, you, you'll change this, you'll add your own entry here, add a constant here, um, but yeah, I will make sure to include that in the description. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment here or in the Discord, otherwise I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.